Just so that you don't believe that Liz Cheney is the only person with a perspective and a point when it comes to uh, our history of using torture or enhanced interrogation in the U.S., uh, very interesting man, Senator Angus King, uh, independent in the U.S. Senate, was on MSNBC talking about it, and uh, so it was brought up that Dick Cheney, expert on torture, since he's authorized so much of it, does not think that waterboarding is actually torture, and Angus King has a great response to that. It's shocking, and frankly, I was stunned to hear that quote from Vice President Cheney just now. If he doesn't think that was torture, I would invite him anywhere in the United States to uh, sit in a waterboard and go through what those people went through, one of them a hundred and plus, plus odd times. Uh, that's ridiculous to make that claim. This was torture by anybody's definition. John McCain said it's torture, and I think he's in a better position to know that than Vice President Cheney. I was shocked at that statement that he just made. I'm not shocked by anything <laughs> he says anymore, frankly. Yeah. Well, we're, we're basically rehashing, you know, the same story. So no one, no one's talking points have, have evolved since the first time we talked about when it was going on, when waterboarding was the issue, and you say, well, is it torture, is it not torture? And we've had someone, since, I think uh, Jesse Ventura was one, at least. Some mm -hmm. of the guys who went through it and said, well, if you want to know if it's torture or not, you go through it, yeah. and you tell me what you think. And so, they, so now we're, we, I feel like it's deja vu, only because not because of the CIA report about it, not confirming what we already knew, but we need something official. Yeah. So the official thing comes out and we have the same argument again. And I'm a little tired of it mm -hmm. because I'm not sure if anybody's buying this bullshit. That it's not torture? Yeah. Because I, I think for, a lot of conservatives would well, agree with yeah, that. Yeah, because dur during it's the first debate the about face. it, there was plenty of people that were saying, you know, oh, yeah. I forget, I think it's Bill O'Reilly. It was some Fox News uh, um, uh, anchor. It was somehow, oh yeah, uh, sprinkle a little water on his face. I was like, oh, it's a sprinkle of water on your face. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 like giving him a good deep cleansing <laughs> Bior I think that's massage. what's gonna happen. You know, if, <laughs> if the White House, if and when they do release any portion of this Senate report um, on, on what the CIA did when it was lying to Congress apparently and pretending like it was doing stuff and saying it wasn't doing things that were illegal like torture, I think mm -hmm. it'll be interesting. We'll see more of these kinds of old rehashed arguments mm -hmm. that it's not torture, it's enhanced interrogation. We'll see all of this coming out yet again if this Senate report gets uh, gets released. You know, and yeah. I, I, I think it's an important thing for us to bring out. I think it's important yeah. for the country to um, at least have some airing of what's going on. We're not going to get the full airing that mm. we deserve. We're not going to get the full report. What I understand when you hear some of the uh, staffers and some of the senators who have seen what's been going on, they are pretty clear that it shocks the conscience. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, you know, when when we are requiring congressional oversight of these agencies that have the potential to go rogue and not only uh, destroy you know, our foreign policy, but, you know, our, just our credentials around the world, our, our, our authority around the world, our moral authority around the world, you know, which is often the only thing that we have, the only yeah. bargaining chip we have to help countries sort of move in a direction of human rights when we're violating them ourselves. Yeah. You know, it's, it's uh, again, it's mind blowing, but I think we're gonna see a lot more of this if that report does get released, any portion of it gets released. Yeah, I mean, that's really the biggest shame here. I mean, we're not investigating these, these abuses that took place under the Bush administration just so that we can point fingers. We know Obama is not going to do that. It's mm. easy for us to say that Dick Cheney is a war criminal, which he is, and that he authorized torture, which is illegal, which it is, and he did. But we know that Dick Cheney is not going to end up in a prison. What we're trying to do, or at least my interest in this, is to head off another instance of this being started. The next time a Republican or perhaps a hawkish Democrat gets into office and decides that enhanced interrogation is the way to go. And this isn't a strictly like, this isn't a philosophical debate that we're having. This has an effect on how people around the world see us. As you said, like our moral credibility, that is not just some abstract co uh, concept. That is an incredibly useful tool that we rely on in how we interact interact with, uh, with other countries, the governments, but also the populations. You can look today, you poll people around the globe, what do you think about the US? And they hate us. They hate us far more than they did before, and not just the countries that we invaded them. They're seeing the way we treat people when we capture them. They're seeing how we use drones and things like that. These, these, are, not, these are not vague philosophical concepts. They have very real world consequences for the future of terrorist attacks against the United States, for the future of how people interact with our soldiers in countries around the world. And it's a, it's a real fucking shame that Liz Cheney thinks that it's basically a joke, that Dick Cheney thinks that it's a joke, and that they have a platform like Fox News to spread these lies on a daily basis. It's an argument of characterizing those important issues with around the world. 
Who cares if they think we're hardcore? Who cares if they think we're vicious? Who cares about them? They're just jealous because we're America. Yeah. And in reality, what we care about is how much does the world think our president's weak? You know, they think our president's weak. Suddenly you care what the rest of the world thinks of you. So it depends <laughs> on which side of the argument you want to be on. So they, I mean, it's a matter of, I mean, how much do you hear people yelling about, oh, the world thinks our president's weak? And how much do you hear people on our side of the table yelling about, do you understand what real relations this does to our country yeah. when we actually, really when everyone passed. knows what we're doing. Yes. Waterboarding wasn't invented in 2003. It has a history, but it has been a very shady, negative history. As many of you probably know, and, and do more research into this, uh, our special forces are often forced to undergo waterboarding. That's sort of a test of their endurance and things like that. But it's not meant to like help, oh, we need a subject so that we can learn how to waterboard people. Th that was being done to them because we knew that our barbaric, immoral enemies at the time were waterboarding captured soldiers. And they needed to learn how to deal with it because that was the horrible world that we lived in. It wasn't so that we could get ready to take part in that ourselves. It was because we knew that the Russians and the Chinese and other countries like that could possibly use it on our soldiers. And in the future, when we try to bargain with other countries and try to establish some minimum uh, level of treatment for our captured soldiers, we have no chips anymore. We have no ability to do that. And so when a US soldier gets captured and he's subjected to waterboarding and other forms of torture, sorry, Liz Cheney thinks that that's what's required to keep her safe in some abstract sense.